Hey, what's up, family? This is Marseille, a.k.a. The Property Pastor, coming at you with another great video. Today, we're going to be talking all about the rat race. Now, this is not something that you're worried about around the house where you got rats and mice and all that kind of stuff. No, we're talking about the rat race, which is all about financial freedom. It's all about financial independence. And I want to dig into this thing a little bit because um, it's something that really just blew my mind. Um, I'm going to make a couple of videos about this, and I'm going to talk about over the course of these videos, the rat race revelation. And then the rat race revolution. You know, I've been praying about my next year, my next year goals and all the kind of stuff that I want to do. Um, and I want to help people in, in 2021. You know, folks that are in my close circle, I've told them over and over. I'm like, hey, man, whatever I know, you know. And those of y'all who follow me on uh, on YouTube and on social media, Facebook and, and Instagram, I'm here to add value to you. I'm here to give you information, you know, stuff that I wish I had when I got started out. But, you know, I believe that we're called to give. You know, God gives us gifts so that we can give those gifts away. So I want to give you everything that I know so that you can help it help you to build a legacy for yourself, for your family, for generations to come. But again, today we're talking all about the rat race revelation and the rat race revelation is when you finally come to that place where you realize that your current job, right, working on it, um, even sometimes owning your own business, um, these things may not get you to where you want to go. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, sometimes we're, we're working a job. And for me, you know, I, I think it's fantastic, you know, to go to school, to uh, get an education. Right. I rep, you know, North Carolina A&T State University, Aggie Pride all day. Um, and I, I learned I learned so much there. But one of the things that I didn't learn was how to make money, uh, become an employee. You know, I didn't learn how to make money, go in turn, make money. You know, it was all about get that job. Um, you know, work, you know, 30, 40 years, or whatever, retire at 65, maybe 62, um, and then live out the rest of your days. But what what's happening nowadays, man, and, and what I even saw, I've seen it recently, I've seen people who work years and years and years, retire from their job 65, and then pass away, you know, six months later, you know, I don't want that for myself. And I don't want that for you guys. So to, to me, the rat race revolution and the rat race revelation are in, extremely important. You know, if you've ever read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, they talk about the rat race and a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about is kind of based on that. Um, and it's, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad when I was in my 20s. But even then, right, I didn't I didn't fully grasp the concept. And as I grew older, you know, I've progressed through my career as an engineer and I still work, you know, my, my W2, my wage job. I, you know, I still go to work every day for, for the most part. And I pastor a church on the side, um, you know, and that's really my life's calling and life's purpose. But when I'm out of the rat race, the property pastor is going to focus on pastoring branches of the Vine Community Church. And that's why I do uh, real estate investing. But I say all of that. Let me let me before we go too far, let me define what the rat race is, because you may be looking like, man, what are you talking about? First of all, the rat race is is quite simply get a job. Right. And, and we all our lives, we are taught that, hey, go get a job and, and, and work is honorable. Work is is we should work. You know, I think work is extremely important, um, but we're taught go get a job. Right. Go to work, uh, get a paycheck, then go to work. Right. Get a paycheck, pay your bills. Uh, then finally you retire and then at some point you die, you pass away, you go on to your next phase in life. And I don't know about you, but there's a lot of stuff that I enjoy doing, you know, that it's outside of work. You know, I love helping people. I love uh, preaching the gospel. I love preaching and teaching God's word. I love working and serving in my community. Uh, but in order to pay my bills, I go to work. You know, I, I go and, and, and work and, and, you know, my, my degree is in, in engineering. So I go and I work every single day. But then I started to realize I'm like, man, I go to work and I get, you know, two, three, maybe four weeks of vacation uh, per year to do the things that I truly want to do. You know, and if you find yourself, you know, living for the weekend, like, oh, I can't wait until it's the weekend. I can't wait till it's the weekend. Or you find yourself on Sunday, like, oh, no, I got to go to work again. You know, you find yourself where I got to pay all of these bills and, you know, I work to pay bills and, and all that kind of stuff stuff um you're in the rat race you know and that's that's what it is and that's the revelation um the revelation is that if you are not working on your own dreams you are working on someone else's right and you may be saying well hold on man that's that's a lot man i got a great job you know but you ask yourself if you want to go do certain things on a tuesday at 10 a.m right and you want to just take the day what, what do you have to do who do you have to ask? What paperwork do you have to fill out? And you may be saying, here's the thing that, you know, you might get mad about this, but here's one thing I learned about true. Learn to be true. And, and I learned this in the cash flow quadrant and I learned this through the E-Myth book. If you are a self-employed business um, and the business is dependent on you to make money, 
you're still in a rat race. And you might be saying, well, hold up, Marce. I, I don't agree with that. I, I, I'm not feeling that. You may be saying, and I know the story, right? Because you're saying, man, if I want to take off, I could take off. But here's the deal. When you take off, what happens to the flow of your money? If you take off, right? If you are running a business and let's say, for example, you you are a barber or let's say, for example, you got a, a nail salon or, or a construction business or whatever that is and you don't go to work, right? And you, when you don't go to work, do you still get paid? And, and the thing about that is if, if that's the case, you now, right, you're still trading time for dollars, right? That is the rat race right there. It is trading time for dollars, right? So the thing is, if you're not working and if you're not working towards progressing out of that cycle, you're always going to be stuck in that cycle, right? It's not a real good deal, honestly, to, to save up and put in your 401k and, um, and, and make it to your 62, 65. And sometimes maybe, I mean, I've seen as less as six months, you know, because the crazy part is you've been so busy doing that routine and that you change it towards the end of life only to find out, man, that, you know, that's what was keeping you going. You know, health starts to go down. Mental capacity starts to go down. Right. I, I think it's important to have a purpose and a why to be working towards that and to have a dream and a goal that you're working on. Like for me, it's all about um, building God's kingdom. You know, and for me, it's all about serving. You know, I want to serve in the community. I want to build people up. I want to mentor all of that kind of stuff. That is my dream. Right. And I'm working on that every single day. And real estate is just a vehicle. Right. And I think at the end of the day, our our uh, the revelation is that we must figure out how to make money work for us. So that's the revelation, man, is that if you're not working uh, on your dreams, you're working on somebody else's dreams. And I can tell you the person who owns your company. Guess what? You know, they're they're not <laughs> they're, they're not at work every single day. You know, they're, they're living a the life they want to live because they've now employed you and you're working towards fulfilling their dreams. And that, that might be a hard pill to swallow. But the sooner we understand that revelation, um, then we can start to move into the revolution. Right. So the, the thing about this is uh, I want to kind of give you just a preview of what it takes to, uh, to to escape that rat race. What does it take? You know, I'm, I'm 41 years old and, and for the first probably 10 years of my life out of school, I was just just glad to have a good paying job, just glad about it. And then as life began to continue to pr progress on, I'm like, OK, I'll move up to, you know, management and these kind of things. But is it really freedom? You know, it's a decent living. But is it is it really freedom? You know, so so let's talk a little bit about what it takes to escape that cycle, that cycle of, hey, get a job, go to work, get a paycheck, uh, pay your bills, get up, go to work, get a paycheck, pay your bills, get up, go to work. Right. That's that's a that's kind of depressing, <laughs> honestly, when you think about it. But the thing that must happen in order for us to escape the rat race is that the income from our assets has to exceed our expenses. The income. Let me say that again. Income from your assets has to exceed your expenses. Now, an asset, if you don't know what that is, an asset is something that makes you money without you working for it, right? There's several examples I'm going to give you here in a second. Um, an asset could be something like um, a real estate uh, investment, right? A property, a rental property, and that's what I do. Um, it could be, you know, stocks, mutual funds, things like that, that, that can pay dividends. I own those as well. Um, and I, I highly recommend you learn how to, how to get some too. Uh, it could be businesses. It could be franchises, right? All of these kind of things, right? If you just, you pull up with your family and y'all buy a Chick-fil-A franchise or a yogurt franchise or whatever that looks like, those are things and you get somebody to run it right now, you own the business. Those are assets that can generate revenue for you. Right. So when you have your day job, you are essentially trading your time for dollars. Right. But when you have an asset, right, the asset is what works for you. you if you if you own stock in Amazon, you didn't go to work. Right. If you own a rental property on the first of the month, you got good paying tenants. They pay their rent. Right. You did not go to work for that. Right. So that, that's the thing about an asset. But the income from those assets in order to truly escape the rat race, the income from the assets has to exceed the expenses that you have, right? Um, what it takes to, to feed you, where you live at, uh, your utility bills, all of your expenses, right? When you get to the place where your assets can produce enough income that exceeds your expense amount, you can actually leave the rat race. You can officially leave it. Um, and, and when you do that, right, there's there's a lot of things that, that, that become uh, beneficial to you. Because uh, you, now you're in control of your own time. You, you don't have to trade. Uh, you don't have to trade dollar time for dollars anymore, 
right? So and, and other option, right? You can increase uh, your assets, but you can also lower your expenses, right? If you downgrade, I mean, I've heard of people, you know, young people living a minimal, minimalist lifestyle where, you know, they pack all up and, and get in an RV, they sell their house, they don't have a mortgage. And that's really, you know, one of the most high expenses that people have. They get rid of the house, they buy an RV and they just travel the country, right? So they're living off of 30 grand a year. They Technically, that's financial independence. They've escaped the rat race. So again, you can increase your expenses from assets or you can greatly lower uh, you, excuse me, you can you can increase your income, right, from assets or you can decrease your expenses, the things that, that, that take your money away. So if two things I want to give you before I leave are two definitions. First one is financial independence and the second one is financial freedom. So financial independence basically happens when you are no longer dependent on the income from your day job. Um, you know, the thing about earned income is, is, is that it is taxed pretty high. Uh, your tax bracket could be 25 percent, 28, you know, whatever that is. But earned income is typically taxed at, you know, one of the higher tax brackets. Um, and, and the thing about it is you are trading time for money. You're right. So you're getting you're getting money, but you got to go to work, you know, eight hours a day, 10 hours a day. I mean, sometimes you're still working on work when you're not at work. You're thinking about work. It's, it's an all uh, consuming thing. Um, and, and I think once you achieve financial independence, that's again, you've got your income from assets. You might have cash flow from rental properties. You might be giving, giving, getting dividends from, you know, stocks and mutual funds uh, that you own or your business is generating enough profit um, that you no longer have to work, you know, where at, at your, your, your day job. Uh, but I think when you do achieve financial independence, guess what? You choose when to work. Uh, you choose where you work and you choose what you work on, right? If you wake up that day and you say, you know what? I don't think I'm going to go in today. I think I'm going to sleep in. Or, you know what? I think I'm going to go for a walk today. Or, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to my kid's school and have lunch. You know, whatever those are, that's the independence that you have. You have that ability. And because your asset is working, right, you don't have to be working. So right now, are you the asset, right? If you're the only asset you have, you know, that's problematic. So we're going to talk about as we get into the uh, revolution uh, in future videos, we're going to talk about how do you increase your streams of income? I think everybody should have multiple streams of income that are working for them when they're not working. But so that's financial independence. The next thing, though, is financial freedom. And we're going to I'm going to close the video out on this one. Financial freedom, I think, is where we all want to get to. So step one is financial independence. Step two is financial freedom. Financial freedom um, is when money is no longer a limiter in your life, right? It's no longer a limiter. And one of my prayers, you know, is that I say, God, bless me to be a blessing to people. You know, as, as I'm able to, uh, to to generate, you know, more and more income, how can I help people? How can I bless people? Yeah, I want to just be a, a conduit to bless people, right? But I look at uh, Mackenzie Scott, right? Mackenzie Scott just gave out like 50 uh, it's like 50 million or I, I can't remember what she gave. She gave out, uh, actually it might've been billion. She gave out tons of money to historically black colleges and universities. Um, I mean, she just gave out just crazy money that we can't even fathom. Right. But she was able to do that because she's got total financial freedom. Now that's Jeff Bezos, uh, ex-wife, right. But she helped them build the company. She's an author in her own right, right. She has the ability. She has total financial freedom. You look at folks like Bill Gates, right. They're giving out tons of money. Um, folks, you know, Rockefellers and, and, and Vanderbilt, they, they started just giving money away as they got older because they realized, Hey, I can't take all the stuff with me. You know, I need to try to make the world a better place right um so so get to that place right of financial freedom is where you can travel you can give it away you can serve you can be a philanthropist it's totally up to you that's the nice part about it because that financial freedom money is no longer a limiting factor in your life you know and, and i think when we get to the place of this whole rat race revolution um getting to the point where we don't have expenses we're not spending all our money on um, liabilities you know we want to go to the bahamas we want to get new shoes look don't try to wear your wealth I mean, because there's no wealth there, you know, uh, in, in, in the black community, we have so much buying power. And one of the reasons is, um, you know, African-Americans don't save that much. You know, it's unfortunate, but it's a sad reality. Right. But we weren't taught this kind of stuff. And, and that's why we're here. I'm here to lift um, your financial education, to lift your business education, but also to lift your spirit. So uh, my prayer for you, man, is that you guys are blessed. I'm just grateful you tuned in today. If you uh, if you're not a subscriber, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're dropping brand new videos, you know, every single week. Great content to help you in your uh, your journey. But again, man, I just thank you for for tuning in today. I have truly enjoyed having this uh, opportunity and privilege to share space with you. And um, if you got questions, drop them in the comment section and I'll get back.
back right back to you. This has been Marseille, the Property Pastor. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Love you so much. Cannot wait to see you again. Take care and God bless. Oh,